Noon on Thursday, folks. Ted Rolson here in our Think Tech studios overlooking downtown Honolulu with the sun setting behind us. How can that be at noon, the sun setting? I don't quite get the graphics here. <laughs> anyway, our show, Where the Drone Leads, where we talk about subjects that are relevant and current in the world of drones and that incredible emerging technology. And welcoming back on the show for the first time in about three months. That's right. So guys who've been escaping being on the show, but we caught them today. <laughs> uh, Michael Motus, Hello, Micah, good seeing you again, man, and Always. Kainoa Jimenez. Yes. And we have Kainoa as the COO and Micah as the CEO yes. of Qualea Gold. You know, I know you was talking about that background. We've got to go ahead and take a drone shot and make sure we change that background. I think we're going to have to get some free uh, 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 VR in there and that sort of thing and get some, <laughs> get some really good stuff going here. We'll show Love the Think Tech Studio you guys. from the outside. How would that be? Oh, that would be perfect. Yeah, we'll do that. And from on top and let that stuff. Okay? <laughs> so what we're here talking about today is uh, kind of one of the steps in the important, uh, one of the important steps in the evolution of drone usage here in Hawaii. Right. And that certainly includes whenever you guys are involved. That all, all, all automatically means the educational program, community outreach, parents and kids, which are our future workforce. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, in fact. If they're a good workforce and we do the right thing, they'll generate the funding we all need in Social Security in our old age. Right. So let me tell you how important it is to <laughs> work with the kids. But uh, the whole subject of, uh, of persistent operations, successful and reliable and safe operations, is something that you guys have, have found it necessary to get into. And that's a really important aspect of this. And that's the world of maintenance and, and uh, continuity of operations and this sort of thing that we really expect these systems to have. So tell us about how you came into that and how we're going to go forward with it. Yeah. Um, basically, we just looked at the outcome of... Outcomes. Once again, that's what you <laughs> always bring to the show yeah. is the outcome. Outcomes drive everything, don't they? You see, that, and that's super important is because with that outcome, the results that you have with, with kids getting involved with UAVs and operations, it's, it's the future. And why we're doing it, why we're doing this, we're the pathfinders. You know, we're the ones that's setting it, um, setting up the course for them. So a uh, group of people from Hawaii, um, especially our, our future generation, can thrive, you know, can um, utilize technology and, and use it to our advantage to survive. I mean, we live in a rock in the middle of the sea. We might as well... Um, We've been always, it's not like, <laughs> I like how we always say it too, we don't reinvent the wheel, we just continue working off of it and improving it and um, innovating it, like Kainoa would say always. And um, what we do, I mean, it's Anunoy schools, for example, that, that community outreach, working with schools in uh, education, uh, we brought them onto the show. They had you a bet. great time. Yeah. We got a picture of them here somewhere, I think, that we're going to show in a minute. We uh, That program that we did was was a great accomplishment for us at Kolel Gold. It's because we finally got to finish a program teaching them real simple fundamentals of how to fly and um, how to fly a UAV, how simple, small things like putting a... Um, registration number on your aircraft that is big not too many people follow up on that uh, or even little as to how to take care of your battery when when you're using a drone in the in the an environment where there's ocean there's uh, the payload that you have to take care of so we that's what we taught in the program and that's what uh, we we understood the importance of you know okay reaching out to the education side of of things is super important. Let's take that. Let's take that one step further, and uh, we got to get the engineering side of this in too. Uh, 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 engineering a is picture uh, of you, kind hey, of. There we are. Part. Okay, we have uh, uh, Kainoa uh, on our right on the picture, and we got a couple of the students that are in great surprise opening a box that has in it a brand new drone. Yes, this is um, this actually was a, a Phantom drone that me and my brother actually purchased and we were having trouble activating it. So it was kind of like put, set aside for a while and it was kind of like meant to be because as soon as we finished this program with the New Inuit Schools, I kind of found the box in the closet and I was like, hey, what is this? And I took it out and I was like, oh wow, this is the drone. This is still brand new. All it needs to do is we need to either figure out if it needs a firmware update or 
what's the actual problem because we sent it to DGI, we sent it to the factory manufacturers, they sent it back, they said that nothing's wrong with it, you just have to update the firmware. And it was having trouble connecting to the mobile device every time you connect it. So what me and Micah did was we teamed up with Drone Services Hawaii, we got the drone activated. Let's have a shout out to Mike and the gang. Mike out and there. Elliot. Mike, right Mike on. Elliot, thank you guys. Yes. Um, we got it started with Mike, Mike Elliot and his team, and as soon as we finished it, we we shot straight back to Anunoy schools, took it back to them, presented it to the children, and that's what you saw in the photo. They were so stoked. <laughs> but you know what goes through my mind is that uh, there's so many pieces in this conversation already that yes. are parts of the drive to the future. One of them is the issue of system reliability and mm -hmm. detection of faults and correction of faults, which is maintenance and is, uh, as you mentioned, that really magic word, firmware updates. Even the hammer you buy at Home Depot today has firmware, I'm sure, in it yes. somewhere. <laughs> and it comes with a DVD or uh, some kind of, you go on a web and you got to get the operation you know, instructions for the hammer, right? Yes. So everything is tied to the web, is t now tied to the cloud. And so um, firmware, software, reliable software, trusted software, and software that tells you when it's not working. Yes. Really big parts of where this has to go. Right, right. now we're not there. No. So right now we're depending on you guys to figure out what's working, what's not working, and come up with a, a maintenance program to inspect, and then a recovery program to fix, and then a return to service test of some kind to verify that it's good to go. So And that was the best part about this learning experience is that we finally understood, okay. The best part is the outcomes. The right. outcomes. I'll take your word, okay, we, we outcomes. Right. The, the outcome of this was, yeah, there you go. really, we, we are that that's uh, UAV service company that provides maintenance and inspections on your aircraft. And we're not talking Let's just. Let's say that again. We are your UAV service company that provides maintenance and inspections on your aircraft. On your aircraft, yeah. That is an incredibly compelling and containing statement. And it's really important that, in fact, I think we need to find a way to make some instructional videos out of this oh. uh, big time because that very I idea it goes back in my mind to the fact that these UASs, yes. they operate in the, in the air. Yes. And anything operating in the air has to have a guaranteed level of reliability. And we're not there yet, but you've come up with a, the first structured look that I've seen to figuring that out. And it might not even be something the manufacturer provides to you. But you, as an FAR-107 pilot, are obligated right. to step in and fill in the gap not provided by the manufacturer. And you're starting down that path. And the, the best thing about it is that, okay, the outcome, right? How you involve the community, you're an entrepreneur, and how are you gonna involve the community? So we like to push it out to the schools. We are creating all these videos that it's real basic maintenance, real basic PSA, public service announcements to the community about drone awareness or UAV operations. And it's even better to look out for Kolea Go because we're coming to your school and we're going to be telling you, <laughs> hey, okay. join us together. We can join together, have this opportunity of technology. We, we've figured it out how to bridge this gap. And no better way is to have your school recognized as the operators, the uh, maintenance providers, the the really the uh, what, what what's the word am I looking for? Insurance. Outcomes. Yeah, outcomes. A big outcomes. So that was our for our service. That was the main one was creating this checklist um, and using it towards our our clients who give us drones and they say, hey, you know, we, we just got a, um, we have a, a bunch of aircrafts that needs to be inspected and uh, we're planning on using it for commercial work. Oh, that's perfectly fine. Give us the air aircraft, we run it through our checklist, make sure everything is all um, functional. And of course, it comes with the understanding of, um, as part 107 pilots, it's a. It's an obligation that it, you've taken on by getting that 107 certification for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
But I like the fact that you're coming from manned aviation training as well. Yes. And um, got to get Kainoa in that program oh, yes. as soon as uh, you're clear. I look forward to but, that. Yeah, but I think that you certainly know as you push the throttle up in that Cessna 172 and start rolling down the runway, you can't be thinking, gee, I wonder if this thing's going to stay together for the next hour right. that I paid, paid for here. I, I appreciate and, and so. you recognizing that, uh, the training as a student pilot at the Wright Flight School. Um, they're training there. It's like I said, it's, they're just showing you the wheel. You don't have to recreate it. Just learn the wheel. Learn how you treat an aircraft, a manned okay. aircraft, how you pilot it, how you, you go over PAVE, you go over I am safe. This is all, all our acronyms that we have to go over. That's good. It's, acronyms are what it's all about. <laughs> it is. There's a lot of acronyms in our industry. So when we use it towards <coughs> manned aircraft, it, it, it's like there is no... Um, frustration, or it's, it's really clear on what we have and to do. And what we should do is we got to take that experience and exactly what you're going through right now in the training and import that transfer over to the world of manned air, unmanned aircraft. In Pololo, up at Anui Nui, when we're launching off on a mission, just like in the 172, he pushes the throttle up, is it going to stay together for the next hour, please? Uh, <laughs> we need to make sure that uh, uh, when you push the throttle up on the UAS, it's got a good hour ahead of it. Right. And so we can run the mission and not put anybody in jeopardy or harm or not lose the airplane or the sensor or whatever it may be and not, not perform the mission. So mission first, outcomes, once again, to steal your favorite word, <laughs> and or orient the whole concept of, of training and maintenance planning and maintenance execution to achieve the mission. Yes. What a, a great way to tie this all together. And that comes back to the engineering side. And oh, yeah. Kaino is our junior engineer here, <laughs> but the, you know we're adding, we're putting these very complicated systems, more complicated than the Cessna 172, I might add, very in the hands of people who may not have any prior history in working with complex systems. We have a ground controller. Yes. We have a unmanned air system. Yes. We have batteries. We have radio communication in between. We have buildings that intercept the radio communication. We have interference from signal bounce or uh, just uh, radio noise from some RF source, all those things tend to destabilize or, or uh, make more complicated the operation than that 172. And so um, the problem is actually more complex yeah. that we delivered into the hands of a lot of people without much training. Yeah, and that's what you know, our, our kuleana or our responsibility is, um, especially because you know we, we understand that okay, we have operators out now, part 107, and we wanna make sure that all operations in the community is done right, is done correct, um, real simple. If they're asking permission to, you know, film over here on, on the island, and <coughs> we wanna push that community effort for, you know, reaching out to all these part 107 pilots who are operating for weddings, for, uh, real estate, you know, please double check your work with your with your maintenance. Make sure you have a scheduled maintenance. Uh, make sure you have, if you're performing something else, say uh, unscheduled maintenance. Be sure, <laughs> be sure to log that down. It's it's not a rule for Part 107, but it is a recommendation, and it's a very good one, especially for productive, um, basically reducing the risks and liability. Let's, let's talk about that very issue, reducing the risk of liability. That's like an engineering part of the like problem. We'll talk to Kaino about that. Mission. We'll get back from our first break here. My name is Calvin Griffin, host of Military in Hawaii, which airs here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 11 a.m. Please join us. We'll be talking about issues concerning our military, veterans community, and other related issues that concern all of us. Hi, uh, this is uh, Jane Sugimura, and I'm the co-host for Condo Insider, and uh, we're on Think Tech Hawaii every Thursday at 3 o'clock, and we talk about uh, condominium living and issues that affect condominium residents and owners, and uh, so I hope you will join us every week at, on Thursday, uh, and uh, we appreciate uh, you uh, viewing our show. Aloha. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here. Thanks for joining us on Think Tech Hawaii, and I invite you to join me every Friday on Think Tech Hawaii at 12 o'clock, where I give you all the energy news that's worth talking about here in Honolulu. And uh, I love to talk about hydrogen. So join us on Friday on my lunch hour here at Think Tech Hawaii. Be there. Aloha.
We're back, folks. Ted Ralston here, our Think Tech Studios downtown Honolulu, with your favorite show, Where the Drone Leads, and two of our favorite guests on the show, Michael Motos. Yes. CEO of Coleo Gold, and I know Jim it is, uh, COO, yes. used to be CTO, yes. now probably combined CTO, COO yes. of Coleo Gold. And by the way, we have a favorite Colea in our yard, uh, Moana Nui, we call him, because he makes the big trip over the big water. Hmm. But uh, we're getting ready to go. And just imagine what they're thinking about right now. You know, they're two weeks away from their, maybe three weeks away from their big trip, mm -hmm. uh, looking at 3,000 miles nonstop in three <laughs> days. And uh, they're not even getting, they're, they're just beginning to get social and start to work with each other, recognizing that they have to operate as a flock when they go together for technical reasons we can speak of at some point in time. But just think what those guys are getting into right now. We always think about what they go through. That's the whole reason why we named Coleo. Oh, right on. Okay. Uh, same situation where you're, you're getting ready for a flight and you're taking off and you're dealing Perfect with Perfect analogy. Right? right. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> so let's talk about that very issue we had just before the break, that issue of, um, of the uh, safety, reliability, and, and how we take those kind of abstract terms and make them very executable in a tactical level with a spreadsheet or a, or a score sheet or a checklist. If you take a look at this, uh, this particular UAV on the yes. table here and, and the ground controller, how would you look at that from the perspective of is this thing going to operate for the next hour successfully or not from your engineering perspective, Gainoa? Well, first and foremost, you check for the FN number, which is located okay. usually on the top. And if they have that, then you know they're already on the right path. The next step, I would check the battery life, see if... It needs charging, or if, if as long as the battery has 50% or not over, I can turn on the craft and see if it needs any update of firmware or if the remote controller. So, with DJI products, the aircraft and the remote controller, they're their own separate software. So, you have to update them separately. So, if you update the drone and you don't update the remote controller, mm -hmm you won't even necessarily be able to connect your controller to the aircraft, which is kind of the problem we was having with the drone that we donated to Anui Nui. So the problem was when I sent the aircraft to the um, manufacturer, DJI updated the firmware on top of the craft, but they did nothing to the remote controller. So when, it, when I got it back, it was a brand new drone that wouldn't work, basically because the remote controller and the craft are working off two different frequencies because this frequency is working off this updated firmware. That one is still working off the old updated, I mean not updated, firmware frequency. So that's the next step I would choose. If it even connects to each other, to even access the camera, or even turn on the motors. If it so can't you even can, do you that. You can think of a scheduled oriented, a, a, a progress oriented schedule where you check this, check that, yes. check the other, and then you can verify that yes. things are, are good at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And and then how do you uh, how, how do you memorialize that or make sure that the goodness for this flight also applies to the next one? Got to check it again. Always, or, always pre-flight okay. before you fly. Usually, I like to check it a day or two before, because these these things take time to charge. Or even if, like for example, one of these drones I was updating recently, they were not even activated which is going to take a lot more time to create a whole account with DJI and all, that's, all that jazz. And as soon as you finish that, then you can go all through the process of updating that drone, which is a whole another jazz. And as soon as you finish updating it. So you kind of need a flow chart to tell you what to do, and you got to have a, some kind of a figure of merit or a figure of success partway through that says you're on the right track. Ideally, yes. And I work with a checklist, because so, mm -hmm. like I said, there's a lot of things to, to take detail and notice of and you can miss miss a couple steps along the way which can affect the whole flight in itself like you said now suppose you decide something is um not working correctly like say the gps how would you determine the gps board not working correctly and giving you a bad gps signal normally you connect it with the remote controller which gives off a video feed and usually on that feed it gives you a menu of of um certain warning signs or it says usually it's indicated green or red and Normally red means that the aircraft is either not updated or is having trouble connecting with its GPS board or something's wrong. So that's usually what the first determination I would look for. Okay, is. so you get a visual indication here yes. indicating go, no go. Mm -hmm. And then you have to diagnose what, what the situation is now behind yes. that. Yes, yes. 
So if it led to the GPS board, and now we know we have a faulted GPS board, um, common sense would say, shut everything down and recycle it. Yes. And that, that's called re-racking mm -hmm. in the airplane business. You don't fix anything, you just take it out of the rack and push it back in again. And that, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Most of the time, hopefully it works. <laughs> yeah. So re-racking is number one. And uh, uh, recycling, yes. same thing, and re-racking. Failing that, and that GPS board really is hard down. Mm -hmm. Then you gotta take it apart, yes. find that GPS board, and replace it. Yes, that's so. the least, least possible scenario is you wanna take it apart. Normally you'd wanna reset it in that usually fixes it, but if that doesn't work, normally that's the next step. Take apart and look what what's going on inside. Now, when you look at a circuit board, um, it's hard to see anything wrong with it, a circuit, unless there's burn marks on it or something. A circuit board looks like a circuit board. Yes. So you must have some diagnostic testing you can do with is with sensors or instrumentation of some kind that would tell you what the health of that GPS board is. You could and use voltage meters, which usually okay. I use. Okay, you'll check on continuity then with a yes. voltmeter or something. If it has good continuity, if not, then that could be a faulty part in itself that needs a replacement. So basically at that point, you simply remove that board. Yes. And now we're getting it. down to physical work. You've got to unsolder things, I suspect, in some yes. cases. And certainly you've got to unscrew them to remove them from the frame. And you've got to put a new one in. Mm -hmm. And that, then the next, and that, the plot thickens. Is that new one the same model number as the one before? So and normally... DJI, they normally, if you have a faulty part on your craft, they re, they do not offer the replacement part. They either require you to buy a whole new craft or buy the updated part, which is the updated part of that faulty part, which and usually costs a little bit more, but that's we'll less than buying the craft okay. again. <laughs> but it's backwards compatible so that that updated part will fit the, the yes. down change piece you've got here. Yes. So then you have to go through the process again mm -hmm. of verifying now that it's been fixed. Yeah. In the meantime, the project manager is sitting here, I want the outcomes, I want to get this job <laughs> done. Right? So you're getting pressure from, <laughs> from the operations side uh, to go make it happen. Right? So uh, this, is, this is like aerospace all over again. This is exactly <laughs> what happens, as you know, in the 172 you fly or in the uh, 767 you fly to California when you take a trip. So it's what's most amazing is you guys are in the middle of that, starting to break down those pieces of the action into identifiable tasks and then doable repair mm -hmm. tasks. And as time goes on, we must think that this whole process will get better and better and better. There's a fault systems will identify themselves on the screen indicating what has failed yes. and what must be done. Yes. In this particular case, uh, just so you know, this particular uh, model, it gives you a warning when you're one hour away from having motors that are probably at the end of their life. Mm -hmm. So you can change the motor before you run into a problem. Um, but this is a sort of step-by-step -step thinking that is so important to teach and pass down to the uh, folks following behind us. And that's where these videos come in. We, this is a video right here we're making, right? This is, yes. And uh, uh, there's no reason we couldn't think of uh, 20 of these that would be in five-minute segments useful in a way that the classrooms could use them anywhere from the elementary to the high school years mm -hmm. and begin instilling that systematic thinking in here and yeah, then when the kids are done get out of their way because yep. they're going to move <laughs> and so move if fast. you if you are a school or an, an entity that is interested in creating these videos with us because we have the aircrafts we have the equipment to do these these videos um and, and vice versa, we can work together making these videos, being recognized as <laughs> working with Pathfinders, the outcome is... Right? The outcome, the Pathfinders, this guy is incredible. <laughs> Let's put up a con connection point for you on here. Kolea Gold, how do people get a hold of you? Yeah, you guys, um, you folks can get a hold of us through our website at www.koleagold.com. It's all one word, right? Yes. Kolea Gold, one time. Yes. Koleagold.com. Or um, you can reach us at our, our phone number. I'll, I'll reach it out at 808-382-5225. And we'll be more than happy to uh, reach out to, this, to you folks and talk more about these videos. Um, and we, after completing our videos, we can go ahead and present it to the FAA uh, Safety <laughs> Board and yep. to the FSDO or the Flight um, uh, district office here in Hawaii and they'll be more than happy to support this movement um, especially uh, I quote and unquote the more work we do the less work they do. Right? <laughs> we heard that didn't we this morning <laughs> we yeah did. right 
So that's right. The, the more we stabilize, standardize, and make reliable our behavior, the less they have to get involved because we're doing the path that they've laid down for us. Yes. And on the other hand, we can push the perimeters on this and push the frontiers and find what where things have to be changed in regulations and such, which is part of what the Pan Pacific Unmanned Air Systems Test Range is all about at yes. UH under the UH Applied Research Lab. And then advise the FAA on where that's where those rulemaking actions need to be or those design changes as the case may be. Mm -hmm. But I really this is the first conversation we've ever had with anybody who's diagnostically unscrewing these things, unlayering them, and finding a systematic approach at the general level to uh, um, to push this whole business forward. And that is so incredible. I want to thank you so much, Michael, yes. for having that thought in of the first course. place. We'll be back next week. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You too. Yes, and we don't need to make sure anybody who wants, any school out there wants to get a hold of you guys, yes. let's do that. And let's generate these 20 videos that we can give out there at five minutes apiece. Five minutes is about the attention span of people like me. And uh, <laughs> well, we should be able to get the story done in five, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. And folks, well, again, Micah and Kainoa, thanks so much for coming on. Absolutely. Long time missing you guys. And uh, folks, we'll see you next Thursday at noon. Hello.